Presumably, if you're watching this video, that means you care about your career. Now, it doesn't matter if you're currently a student or you have an internship or you're working in some sort of job. If you want to end up in your dream job, this is the no BS way to do that. I should also mention before I start this video that there's no magic bullet or secret formula. I wish I could tell you three specific steps that'll get you where you want to go, but if you're willing to put in the time and the effort and actually follow these things, you're going to be in a much better place than you were before. Before you even apply to a single job, the very first thing you should be doing is research. Now, when I say researching a company, I'm not talking about looking on Wikipedia to see how many employees they have, who their current CEO is, and where their headquarters is. More importantly, you should be looking at their tech stack. What languages are they using? What jobs are they hiring for? What level of experience do they want? And what other things do they expect out of their applicants? Realistically, you should be able to find job openings for these companies on either LinkedIn, Glassdoor, or Indeed. And in those postings, generally you'll be able to find information about what kind of skills these companies are looking for. What that means is if the first time you're looking at the requirements for an application is when you're actually applying, you did it wrong. You should have looked six months before that, seen what things they actually wanted, and worked on building those skills into your resume. The reason why this is so important is, assuming you want to be a compelling candidate for this company because you really want to work for them, you want to be able to check off as many boxes as possible. So if they require that you have four skills and they recommend another five skills, and maybe you only have two of those, you're probably not going to be nearly as compelling as someone who looked several months ahead of time, figured out which things they were supposed to be training up on, got some experience with those working on side projects, and now on their resume, they can list all of these things that they've worked in that to a recruiter is going to seem like a gold mine of a candidate. That leads us perfectly into our second point, which is preparation. You should be spending that several months before you've even applied to the opening, preparing for that job, such that if you got a job interview the very next day, you'd be able to knock it out of the park. The reason why this is so important is because you never know when the opportunity is going to show up. Yes, sometimes you'll apply to a job and you won't hear back for months, if ever, but other times you'll hear back within the week saying, hey, can we set up a call for tomorrow? If you haven't done any preparation up until that point, you now have 24 hours to prepare for an interview for your dream job. That is not the position you want to be in. And I realize that this is all very idealistic because you probably have a job or you're currently a student and you don't necessarily feel like you have the time to set aside to prepare for an interview that may never come. But the way you need to think about it is, if you really care that much about that job, if that's truly your dream job and it would change your life, how important is it that if you do have that interview, that you don't squander that opportunity, that you don't go in there, make a fool of yourself, and never get your foot in the door again, and you don't have another opportunity like that for the rest of your career. Speaking from my personal experience, my freshman year, I had a grand total of two interviews. Now, as a lot of you probably know, it's pretty hard to land an internship as a freshman, so any sort of opportunity you get is a very big deal. Now, the first one, I made it through a couple of rounds, and then I got to the technical portion of the interview, which required me to do some coding in Java. I did not know Java. Up until that point, I was solely a C++ engineer with a little bit of Objective-C on the side, and I told them that ahead of time, they never got back to me, and then I got thrown into an interview in Java. Let's just say it didn't go very well and I didn't get the job. Now, I was very lucky that several months later I got another opportunity from a different company and I was able to convert on that and I actually got a freshman internship. But the reason why this was so important is I had the opportunity several months ahead of time to start preparing for Java and instead I decided to wait until I learned it in school and as a result, I completely blew my one big opportunity as a freshman. Especially when you might only have a handful of opportunities, each one of them is extremely important and it was completely my fault that I did not get that job because I hadn't put in the work and the time to prepare for it ahead of time. So if you know you're gonna to need to know Java for an interview, learn Java several months ahead of time. You might not know everything about the language, but you won't make a complete fool of yourself when you show up to an interview and you don't even know basic Java syntax. This point might seem similar to the last one, but there's an important distinction between preparing for an interview and learning the technical skills to be able to do well in that interview. Specifically, there's two main types of questions you need to be preparing for, technical and non-technical. The technical part of the interview should have a lot of overlap with what you did in the last section. So if you're practicing your Java, hopefully when you show up to an interview, if they ask you to do any coding in Java, you'll be able to do that. Looking back at all the technical interviews that I've ever done, I'm not sure I've ever been given an IDE for my development, maybe once. In most cases, either I'm doing it by hand on something like a whiteboard, 
or I'm doing it in a text editor that doesn't have any form of completion. The reason why this is so important is because it's one thing to be able to write something in an IDE where you can look things up and you have autocomplete to rely on versus when you're in an interview in a stressful, time-sensitive environment and you have to write code by hand that you can't look up, you have no autocompletion, you need to know that syntax like the back of your hand. It should be pointed out that every interview will be different. I have had interviewers who are perfectly okay with accepting pseudocode and aren't really worried about syntax. I have also had interviews where I had to specifically write C++ code accurately and I wasn't allowed to look anything up or abstract anything away. I needed to be able to write that program such that if I put it into an IDE or text editor and I hit compile, it would actually work. So there's nothing wrong with getting started in an IDE, but make sure you're not neglecting text editors and writing by hand, because if you can learn how to write code by hand and debug it by hand, you're going to be much better prepared for an interview when it comes to the technical aspects of it. But the other aspect of interviewing is the soft skills. Now, sometimes this comes in the form of softball questions like, what's a time when you worked with someone else and you resolved a conflict, or some other question like that. But it's also just the general impression and how you communicate with the interviewer during the interview. What you need to remember is that the person who's interviewing you is currently an employee who's considering working alongside you as either a manager or a coworker. So if they don't feel like they could grab a drink with you, as the old expression goes, or work alongside you for 5, 10, 15, 20 years as someone they can get along with, they're not going to be inclined to hire you, even if you have all of the technical skills. I know there's probably gonna be some people who dispute this point and say, if you really know the technical stuff, then they're gonna hire you. Maybe in some cases they will, but in other cases, if they realize that you're really gonna be a pain to work with and they can find someone else who knows the technical stuff almost as well as you, but is way easier to get along with, they're gonna take that person nine times out of 10, unless they really need that extra edge of all the technical skills that you supposedly have. Outside of finally actually completing the interviews and knocking them out of the park, this is the last step that you need to be worried about. You should be applying everywhere and you need to make sure that your resume and potentially your cover letter are polished and as good as they can be. At first glance, my advice about applying everywhere seems a little bit counterintuitive. After all, the whole point of this video is helping you land your dream job, not just landing any job. But there's a couple main benefits. The first one is, put simply, you might not land your dream job. And it happens. Even if you do all the preparation, it just might not work out. But if you can find somewhere else that's pretty good, but maybe not quite as good, or it's not your dream job, it doesn't mean it's a bad opportunity. Think of it as a stepping stone. You can go to that company, which is better than where you're currently at now, get some more experience, and then when you apply to your dream job again, you might be a better candidate, and then from there, you might be able to get that job. The other main reason is that those other companies can give you practice and potentially leverage with the job that you really wanna get. So if you're worried about doing well in your interview, Having a couple of other companies to practice that first means you're so much more likely to be able to work out all those kinks and get all the nerves out such that when you go to the one that really counts, you'll do well in it. Also, depending on how well you do with those, you might get a job from them. Being able to say that you have offers from other companies helps your chances of getting a good offer from the company you really want to work for. And there's a couple different ways that this can pay off. First off, you just might be more likely to get the job in the first place by saying, hey, I have offers from all of these other competitors, because in a way that's vouching for the fact that you're a legitimate candidate who seems to have a pretty strong skill set who's been vetted by someone else. Simultaneously, it also might be able to give you a better pay package by saying, hey, I'm gonna be making X at this other company, if your dream job actually really wants you, they might be willing to pay you X plus one to make sure that they actually can secure you as an employee. And of course, if you've done your research like you should have at this point, you hopefully won't end up in this situation, but there's always the chance that the dream job that you had in your mind isn't really all you thought it was going to be. In which case, having applied to those other companies gives you other options. You don't actually have to go work for that company, even though you did all the preparing with that in mind. You can hop over to one of the other companies instead if you really think it's going to be a better fit for you. And this probably goes without saying, but make sure your resume and your cover letter are polished and professional. That is a professional representation of you on a piece of paper, and if there's a single mistake on there, that reflects poorly on you and shows that you're sloppy and you didn't put in the time to proofread and make sure that everything on there was perfect. I've made a couple videos where I talked about resumes in the past, breaking down all my old ones and looking at the mistakes I've made and the ways that I improved them over the years. What's important to remember is your formatting should be nicely aligned and professional. Everything should be spaced nicely. Everything should be a readable font size. You shouldn't have excessive, unnecessary stuff on there. And overall, you wanna make sure that you're highlighting the best qualities of you, not just filling up as much space as possible. You'll occasionally hear about people who seem to be overqualified for positions, they have all the skills necessary, they have a great GPA, they have good experience, and they can't seem to land an interview. The reason why, in a lot of cases, is because the first thing someone sees is your resume. And if they aren't impressed by that, 
you're immediately going to be discarded before you even get a chance to show off all of those skills. Make sure you're letting someone else look at it and make sure you're doing a double check, a triple check of that resume to make sure that it's really the best thing you can send out before you fire it out to 50 or 100 employers. So that's it. There's no magic bullet. There's no secret formula. There's no guarantee you'll be able to get your dream job. But if you do follow all of those steps and you put in the time and the effort, you're going to be in a much better place than you are now. If you found this video helpful, do me a huge favor and consider sharing it and hitting that thumbs up button. It would mean a lot to me. If you're new here, consider subscribing for new videos coming very soon. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.